for attending. This is uh, Emmanuel Organaris. Did I say it right? You're good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get it one time. Um, uh, master's defense, uh, thesis defense for his master's. So he started here two years ago, two and a half years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, and has been working on a lot of model updating, um, but has also been working on elastic sensing skins for monitoring of concrete structures. So we are working on getting a master's on his way to a PhD. So with that, I'll hand it over. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Darn. Uh, um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Dr. Downey, Dr. Subramani. Subramani. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Emmanuel. And I'm going to present my research on elastic sensing skin for monitoring of concrete structures, which is towards um, a master's of science degree in mechanical engineering. Yeah, so this work is so I'm going to talk about the introduction, background, then the main body of the work, which is investigation. And then I kind of divided it into three one, two, and three, and then current ongoing works. and we are going to just conclude the other 10. So um, based on um, the investigation one, two, and three, there have been publication from the paper and from the work, which the first one is uh, the first investigation, we had a publication in um, IOP measurement and science. Uh, and the second investigation that was, was published in um, SPI conference earlier this year. And um, the, four, the last investigation is going to be published very soon but the paper is ready and it's going to be submitted very soon. So um, to the introduction, uh, out monitoring of civil structures, uh, many civil structures are prone to structural failures and um, due to static and dynamic strain that goes on on the, uh, that is being um, exhibited or exerted on civil structures. Example of failures we can see such as cracks and bridges, which can lead to like, um, complete damage and there have been lots of sensors, surface sensors that are used to monitor civil structures uh, like bridges, um, you know, high rise structures and all that. And some of those straight, um, sensors such as uh, resistive strain gauge, fiber grid, um, fiber grid gratings and um, LVDT. Uh, but most of these sensors are very small. They cannot cover uh, most of um, the large area of the civil infrastructure and they are very expensive. So you need lots of them to like deploy them on this um, civil infrastructures. So um, which make them very limited in use. So and then this leads us to soft elastomeric set capac uh, capacitors uh, or, or soft elastomeric capacitor that's um, SEC. I'm going to be regarding it as SEC as I proceed. And uh, it's a capacitive sensor which was uh, developed because uh, to like solve the issue of um, the small, the limited area occupied by most available sensors and their expensiveness. So this sensor is it has low cost. It's very flexible, as we can see. It looks like a rubber, and it it can easily be deployed on any kind of geometry on the concrete or whatsoever structure it's been applied to. It's also very robust in the sense that um, the components that mix up the uh, the SEC, they are all the same. So it's, it has the same component making it up. It's also very easy to install and does not use any power. It is, it's used low power consumption. So you can just deploy without connecting it to any power. So you, you save more power. And then you can also de deploy it as a very big sheet in the sense that it can cover large area just as we are seeing we are seeing here so you can use it to cover large area of what you're monitoring which is an advantage over um, the normal contemporary sensors that are available so how does it really work basically it's uh it deforms along with the structure when it is attached to a monitor structure then it deforms whatsoever um, maybe there's a strain ongoing on the structure that has been monitored, there is a change in capacitance on the SEC itself, and this capacitance can then be used to like um, tell what is going on in the structure. It can be used to predict the performance of the structure. 
So uh, this is just electromechanical model for the SEC, whereby we can, this mode, it is modeled as a parallel plate, plate capacitor. And then from the capacitance, we can, uh, we can obtain the strain, which is um, epsilon here. Yeah. We can use the change in capacitance on the SEC to determine the strain that is ongoing in a, in a structure that we are monitoring, which is the main goal of, uh, or which is how the SEC work. So basic background study uh, of, or those things, the work that have been done previously using SEC. Uh, the SEC has been deployed on steel bridges to monitor particle cracks. And um, here is an example of uh, a depiction of one of the work that have been done previously, whereby cracks are monitored by deploying the SEC on, um, on steel bridges. And then data is, is collected and you can see um, some um, spikes here that shows there are some traffic data or probably like crack or coin in steel bridges based on um, the spike size in the data here. Also previously, um, the SEC has been used on concrete structure, which is the main goal of this work to be able to use the SEC on concrete. Uh, and then it, it's been used to monitor crack on concrete. And then let me just, um, so you can see that there is, as the crack is occurring, the Capacitance is also increasing on the concrete, which is our, the principle of the SEC. So as there is a crack growing, the capacitance recorded by the SEC also increases. So now, um, now the challenge that we have in using the SEC on concrete is that uh, whenever the SEC is deployed on concrete, there is this amplification, signal amplification. Uh, from the SEC, if we look, if we see this um, figure here, the data, this, this is the original strain on the concrete, on the concrete, which is monitored by a reference strain mm -hmm. transducer. But this is the strain from the SEC, in the sense, um, which is amplified. It's more than what is supposed to be, uh, which is the challenge that is uh, because of there is a capacitance coupling between the SEC and the concrete that causes the strain from the SEC to be more than it's supposed to be and that is the main um, body of um, the investigation one now is forced to find a way of reducing the capacitance complaint and making sure that the SEC is working perfectly so how do we reduce the SEC concrete capacitance coupling uh how was uh from the investigation then we had um, this isolation uh to isolate both the SEC and the concrete using um a rubber, a rubber plate and the rubber plate is also similar you can see it's similar to the SEC is very flexible and can also deform as the SEC deforms so how the isolation work is supposed to put a rubber plate between the SEC and the concrete surface in order to prevent the capacitance complaint that's causing the signal amplification so when there is um, a deformation on the concrete it is transferred to the rubber plate then transferred to the uh, sec however the thickness of the rubber sheet that we are using really matters we need to use the right kind of thickness in order to for us to obtain the right um, strain from the sec so basically this is the setup that we used for the experimental process, um, the MTS machine was used, and um, here is um, SCC that is attached directly to a concrete specimen without rubber uh, sheet, and then here is another. This is the concrete specimen that is uh, there is a rubber isolator in between the SCC and the concrete, and here is the loading that was used, um, cyclic load to load the uh, concrete material in order to obtain the signal. And then also the test setup also includes um, a DIC uh, test whereby we, we collect series of images from the loading procedure and then we analyze it to know the strain on the concrete. So the so, uh, first result that uh, was obtained was analyzed with DIC and um, DIC also, DIC is the one in green and we can see that the DIC also matches perfectly well with the um, strain transducer, which is um, the reference strain that we're using. And um, here's just showing the results of the first three seconds of um, um, strain, 
strain uh, increment on the concrete. And this was analyzed the first three seconds um, as strain growth. This, the, the DIC basically tells us uh, strain localization on the concrete. And this is just an analysis as we see that the, the, the color gets deeper, compressive strain increases as, a, as the loading continues. Um, and then this is the initial results from data without um, isolation, and this is data with isolation. And we can see that when isolation was added, uh, the SCC strain data and the, that of the reference strain kind of now aligns, unlike the one without rubber isolation. So we're able to like achieve good result, even though it's not like completely matching for those. Um, very Im good improvement. So uh, in order for us to achieve better results, we kind of like use different thickness of rubber sheets and tested different thickness of rubber sheets from like 0 0.2 millimeter up to 2.8 millimeter. And then as the thickness um, changes, we can see that the strength from the SCC, which is in blue, gets better aligned with um, that of the reference strain. And then we can see that we are kind of good strain result matching from around 0.356 millimeter up to like um, 0.3, uh, 0.635. But then after that, the strain uh, becomes, um, it, it gets lowered again. So we are not getting the right strain. So basically uh, the performance metric from the results from the strain data from all the thicknesses, uh, IRS and how is of and lowest and um, the lowest mean absolute uh, error was seen at um, thickness 0 0.397 millimeter. So that is like a reference thickness for us for our isolation of um, the concrete SCC. Also, um, uh, in the test, I uh, also like tested the right um, strain to use um, the right amount of strain to test with the SCC or what uh, strain can the SCC monitor perfectly. And this, this um, test just shows that uh, we use the SCC to monitor strain of five micro strain, six, increasing strain like that. that. But then at lower strain, the SCC data is very, very rough and um, it, it needs to be filtered in order for us to get good data. But data from 26 micro strain and above can be monitored very well. As you can see that the data looks better and gets better even as um, the strain monitor increases. So in this test, we're able to determine the level of strain that SCC can monitor with isolation. Uh, this is the performance metric for the uh, uh, strain range monitored by the SCC. And then strain below 20, um, 26 micro strain they have very high error and the one above 26 micro strain have lower error. That is, SCC should be applied for strain above 25 micro strain on concrete structures. And then um, the SCC isolation was validated on a, on a large brick deck. Uh, this is a brick deck that was, that was uh, removed from, I, I think this is from the civil lab and then we tested the SCC on it. Uh, this is one without isolation, this is one with these two are with isolation, 0.397 millimeter and under one of 0.794 millimeter. And we can see that from the loading on the bridge, the one without isolation has there is the amplification. And then when they, we had an isolation, uh, there is better alignment of um, strain results with the uh, reference strain gauge that was used um, from this order to which is a validation of the smaller concrete test. So, and then um, the investigation too. Uh, basically, the need for the investigation too, or the reason is for us to be able to modify the SEC to achieve a compact SEC. Previously, we were using like rubber sheet as an isolator, but then we want to achieve like a robust compact SEC such that we are going to like add an isolation layer directly to the SEC without having to like use an extra layer. So this is the second investigation. And then that was done by um, adding extra layer of SCBS, which is also um, a component or part of the makeup component of the SEC itself, but it is not conductive. So 
it can easily reduce capacitance coupling. So the layer was added on both sides of the SEC. This is the SEC itself without isolation, and the whole thing is uh, the SEC with isolation, and it's referred to here as like the extended polymer SEC. So I might be using extended SEC in this second investigation. So the fabrication process for the extended SEC is the same as for the SEC, except adding of extra layer of SCBS to the normal SEC. So like cover our both uh, the um, two surfaces of the SEC. So I'm not going to, this is in, all in the paper and anyone can read it. So material set up for the testing that was done with the second investigation, the same as before, and then we use triangle loading on the concrete this time around. And then um, the this is the concrete, uh, this is a concrete sample. And then on the two surface for the test, one SEC, the extended polymer SEC was attached on one side. On the other side, we had the normal SEC without any isolation. And then there's a reference chain transducer to like judge the strain. And then um, the initial nominal capacitance from both um, SEC were monitored, were, were, were measured. And then you can see that from three samples, uh, the SEC, the normal SEC has higher capacitance. After isolation was added, uh, the capacitance um, of the SEC was lowered, which shows that um, which the isolation lowered the nominal capacitance of the SEC, which is what we are hoping to achieve by um, reducing the application of signal. So um, then on loading, on loading with the triangle loading, this is the normal SEC and then the extended SEC. Uh, these are um, loads after loading was applied, changing capacitance was recorded from both SEC. And we can see when both results are combined together, we can see that the SEC, uh, the extended SEC shows lower change in capacitance on loading compared to the normal SEC because the signal were amplified and then the extended SEC signals are reduced, which is as we expected. So um, here is um, strain delta. After the capacitance were converted to strain and compared with um, the tra uh, strain transducer, which is a reference, uh, we can see that um, the SEC, the extended SEC matches closely well with the strain transducer compared to the amplified signal of the normal SEC from three samples that were used to run the test. So also uh, the DIC was also used to, to analyze the extended SEC and um, compare results. And the, this is um, the DIC setup. And then the, this is the S SEC result compared with normal SEC result compared with extended SEC and compared with DIC. And we can see that the DIC strain data analysis matches better with that of the extended SEC, which um, is, is really good. Um, there is a um, strain during the DIC analysis as um, the strain is as the loading of cause. We can see that strain is is developed, compressive strain is developed, and then compressive strain is developed and then reduces again, it increases again and then reduces again. So this is just all the NHC analysis. If, if we want to know how the strain is actually located on the concrete, so yeah, we use this to actually get that. Um, also the same as the previous time, from the result here, we analyze the first, this is the first six seconds of the um, cyclic loading. And then we can see that strain increases and then decreases over time using the, with the DIC, which is as expected. And then, uh, but the result matches well with that of the extended SEC compared to the uh, normal SEC. So um, after being able to achieve um, the, signal amplification reduction or we have been able to like get a robust sensor 
Then the, SEC, the extended SEC was applied towards um, track monitoring and concrete because, well, we've been able to solve the first issue and um, also done under reasonable work with um, achieving a robust sensor. Uh, the extended SEC was used for crack monitoring. Alongside the, during the crack monitoring process, um, the ISO was also carried out to examine the cracks. So first thing was to check the response of the extended SEC to load uh, using the MTS machine. And this is strain data from the SEC, which was compared to that from the um, um, MTS machine itself, deflection of the MTS machine and um, the SCC, extended SCC data matches very well with that of the M MTS machine in terms of strain. So during um, a cyclic load was applied to the to the concrete and during the cyclic load, um, there was a jump in the data for this is about um, 1000 cycle. Um, of cyclic loading, and then there is a jump in data. During this jump, there was a crack in the S in the concrete. So this jump is caused by the cr uh, by the crack that occurred in the concrete. So um, it, it showed that the extended SCC is very good, and we we can use it to like detect crack when crack occurs. It can easily be used to monitor crack in um, concrete. So this is um, just the DIC set of. Um, just figures. All right, so uh, then the first, the under crack, um, this is not um, cyclic loading now. This is more like uh, just uh, a static that test to to like um, deflect the concrete. So, so it's more like deflecting the, the beam. It's, it's more like a beam now and then deflecting it 0 0.1 inch. So that is, this is all this test is for um, deflecting the beam by, beam by 0 0.1 inch. So it was deflected down and then released again. So here is the data from this deflection. But during the deflection, no crack was formed. So it was more like just deflecting it and then um, releasing it back. So there was no crack form, but it was analyzed with the IC and then the strain matches well with that of the SCC. Then um, here is um, under one increasing the deflection to 0 0.015 inch. There was no crack form also, but then the strain also matches well with that of the DIC from the that of the SCC matches well with the DIC, but there was no crack form. And then um, the deflection was increased to 0. 0 to inches and during this um, deflection, a crack occur in the SCC during the deflection. And then we can see that during the time of the deflection at about um, at about 11 seconds when the crack occurred, we see that there was uh, a sudden jump also in the SCC data, which uh, shows um, how much the SCC can um, detect crack and how well it's its capability of monitoring crack in concrete. And the um, data of observed also is very, very um, close to that from the SCC um, analysis. So uh, to the third investigation, which is um, going to just, I'm going to talk about um, SCC addition how we adhere the SCC to the concrete surface to monitor. Usually, addition has been done using um, JB Weld by component um, adhesive, which is, um, yeah, epoxy. Just call it epoxy anyways. So, but then um, in order to have a much more robust sensor usage in sense that not using an extra material, uh, carbon black solution is usually the electrode of the SCC is the black um, soft, uh, black component on top of the SCC, which is the carbon black air. Uh, we decided to like paint the SCC directly onto the surface of the um, monitor structure because, well, we don't have to, it's straightforward, we don't have to use an extra material and then it's easy to be deployed because the carbon black can be easily painted very fast and or can be sprayed and we don't need any extra material. So 
uh, this is the SSC schematics. So instead of uh, these two surfaces, these two black surfaces, which are the electrode, are the ones that are going to be painted in this investigation. It's going to be painted, and I'm going to show how that is done or how that was done. So for the painting process, basically, uh, is to attach a copper wire, which is going to like be like the conductor to like for the electrode, first electrode dye, and then. The second process is to paint the carbon black solution directly on the concrete surface. And this process normally is usually done using an adhesive whereby we paint, uh, we apply epoxy before to like attach uh, the acid. But this time around, we are painting the carbon black. After that, the dielectric layer, which is the white layer in the middle, is then placed on top of the, um, the painted carbon black. Then um, the last um, painting process, which is the carbon black, is then painted on top of this white surface. And then we have a ready made sensor which can be tested. This is just by painting the uh, carbon black solution. You can see that it looks just like the real sensor, which was not fabricated together. This was painted on concrete. So um, to test the uh, mechanical behavior of this uh, painted SCC, uh so the first this is the this this is painted scc and then another SCC, um strain uh strain gauge was used as a reference strain to like compare data from the painted scc and the first test that was done was a quasi-statics test just like bending up and down the, the steel plate here that we have and then we can see that the result from the painted scc matches very well with that of um, the RSG as the strain gauge was used. And then also a vibration, free vibration test was done. And the results to um, looks, the vibration, free vibration from the painted SCC looks also very similar to that of um, the reference strain. So, and then the painted SCC was then tested on concrete as usual. And um, it was tested alongside with an epoxy, an SCC that was epoxied on the surface of the. So there's one SCC which is epoxy, which was attached using epoxy, and this is the second one which is um, on the other surface that was painted. So, and then these are three concrete that were used, three concrete of different sizes to monitor how. Uh, the SCC will be on the concrete of different sizes. And these are just uh, results from each of the uh, concrete for the epoxy and the painted. They both really look good. However, um, this is a summary of this result right there. So basically, for the, for the um, two inch um, thick, thick concrete, um, there's higher strain because it's same loading for each of them. And then as it becomes thicker, the strain reduces, which is expected. However, the painted SCC matches with, well better with that of the, um, the RSG as a reference strain um, on concrete. Well, basically, this is because we just use um, a random thickness of boards, of both um, epoxy SCC and uh, painted SCC. So, so that led us to like investigating uh, the dielectric layer thickness of the painted SCC and the epoxy SCC. So the uh, painted SCC thickness was investigated and then um, 0 0.4 zero uh, millimeter seems to align better with that of the reference chain, which is very similar to the um, thickness that we are, or like the um, isolation thickness we uh, investigated in the first uh, process. So if we see here, uh, this is like, this is also the summary. So 0 0.4 millimeter thickness aligns better. And for the epoxy SCC, the thickness uh, was also investigated and um, 0 0.36 aligns better. So most of the um, the thickness expected is always about that 0 0.04 or something. So um, shear test was done uh, also on, on concrete on, um, to investigate um, how the, because, well, it's a painted SEC, in order for us to investigate um, the painting, because, well, it's not the same as epoxy, which was, which is very much strong. So to investigate if there is a shear in, um, in the surface that has been monitored, 
how we painted SSA platform. So this was um, uh, done using um, angle bars, and then we can see that they are, they are slotted or such that these two two sides, two bars can can like slide over one another. And as it is placed in the MTS machine, then it is um, displaced downward and the two surfaces slide over one another. And we can see here that there is some kind of deformation in this other one. This is from the insert that I'm showing here. We can see that during the um, dynamic test, we can see that there is some kind of small deformation, which is as a result of the shear in the two angle bar. And then um, results were collected from both SEC at the same time. So um, for the um, for the painted SEC, when there was no um, test going on, the signal from the SEC is very static, which is good. Same thing for the epoxy SEC. But during um, the shear process, uh, increment shear was applied, and then we see that for for small shear. Yes, uh, the painted SEC had some kind of um, um, backward uh, or reversed signal until when the uh, the the shear becomes larger. But for the epoxy SEC, the the shear um, the, the test looks better compared to this. And this is a um, combination of both results, and we can see that uh, the paint the epoxy SEC really did well here compared to that of the uh, painted SEC. And I, I believe this is a result of the fact that uh, the carbon black solution was painted in between uh, two sharing surface. So that could have been uh, the result for why this offer here. Yeah. Um, so currently, um, I'll just talk about ongoing work. Right now, we are deploying the SEC on, um, on bridges right now in order to, uh, to monitor bridges. since. We are still doing the laboratory test, but then it's time for us to like go on and then see how much uh, our work has been uh, has been uh, is actually doing on real world bridges. And then we deploy the uh, these are strain transducer which are references, and then we can see here that we also have SEC that's been deployed on the bridges. So all the tests that we have done before on the bridge, we are going to be testing. Um, all the works we have done, which is um, the regular SEC, the extended SEC, the painted SEC is going to be tested on the bridge. And um, for us, the preliminary data we have obtained is um, traffic monitoring on the bridge. But this data is from RSG, the RSG reference chain transducer. And then during each, this red dot shows when cars is passing over the bridge. So it's more like traffic times. And then we can see that there is, uh, it's showing there are spikes during um, traffic period on, on the bridge. This other last sensor is more like it, it was in the vertical direction. So there, were no, there was no strain in the vertical direction. And this is from the SEC. Basically, the SEC did not record um, strain. And this is most likely because uh, the traffic was not uh, high enough for the SEC to send, sense any signal. Because, well, I said before that the SEC is needed to sense strain of above 25 micro strain, which the traffic is not able to um, produce. Maybe it's not up to that. So, probably we are going to be like, you know, loading the bridge with much higher um, stock truck or something in order to like get better strength of get good rep response from the SEC. And this is still currently ongoing right now. So um, to conclusion, um, effective um, reduction of capacitance coupling, which was achieved in the first investigation as we have been able to publish that in a uh, very good journal. And then uh, we this work also, we were able to achieve um, a compact SEC. The SEC was modified. Uh, all these works are novel. They are, they are, they have not been done before. So, which is really good because we're able to like redesign the SEC to be able to, to be useful on concrete infrastructure. And then um, the extra layer of um, SCBS was able to achieve lower nominal capacitance. That's the modified SEC, and all the results were validated through uh, digital image correlation. Uh, and then we also like validated them on um, larger brick samples and not just um, small concrete samples. 
Um, and then we also perform comparative analysis between um, addition of SCC using direct painting and epoxy method. And then we're able to determine which and when it is best to use either of the addition method uh, to apply or adhere the SCC on the concrete surface. So, all right, this, I already said this before the publication from the work that was done. Um, well, this work was supported basically through research funds, uh, Iowa DOT, Kansas DOT, South Carolina DOT, and also North Carolina DOT. Um, thank you for your time. That's uh, my presentation for my master's defense. Thank you. Very, very good.